Hey, this is Ben Popper from The Verge. Today, Beats is launching a streaming music service, making it the newest competitor in an increasingly competitive market. I'm talking today with Ian Rogers, CEO of Beats Music. We chat about how they plan to stand apart from the pack and why finding new songs to love is actually harder than ever. What is Beats Music? Beats Music is the first music service that's actually a service and not a server, in the sense that it's of service to the listener. You open it up and you're five seconds and one hand from hearing something that makes you want to roll down the window and crank the volume to the right. So there is a lot of competition in this space, obviously. There's established players like Spotify, there's big tech giants like Google and Apple jumping in. What do you think it is that's going to differentiate Beats? I think you were talking about it just a little bit now, but is it mostly going to be that angle of discovery and curation that's going to set it apart from the competition? Yeah, i, I got to be honest, I don't really think there's a lot of competition for what we're doing. I mean, there are other streaming services out there, and I think the services that are out there have answered the question of what is the next format, right? So not to take anything away from them. I think, you know, establishing a big catalog and giving access to a big catalog of music is, is a great first step. The subscription services that are out there today are great if I have a copy of my favorite music magazine in my hand, mm -hmm. or if I'm also you know, looking at pitchfork.com. The vision is really putting those two together, and you open up an app on your phone, and you hit play, and you're like, oh man, that is incredible. So I'll push back on that a little bit. I mean, when I'm playing around on Spotify, a lot of times I check the Pitchfork app on there, and they upload you know, their, their favorite new music, so I discover new stuff through Spotify via Pitchfork. Uh, you guys will have the same kind of tastemakers on there, Rolling Stone and Pitchfork and Double XL. I guess one of the things that Beats was talking about which seemed unique was having you know, this group of 30 or 40 human curators who are going to be pushing out new playlists all the time, you know, that I might discover somebody who's really tuned into my taste or showing me new things. Who are these humans that you guys are getting in there and why do you think they work better than stuff that's algorithmically generated? Yeah, so we have a, a great editorial staff. There's a woman named Julie Pilot who leads our curation and music and relations staff. And then we have Scott Plegenhoff, um, who was formerly the editor of Pitchfork, who leads our editorial staff. And then to go through that whole staff, I mean, it, they're incredible. We have Carl, Ch Carl Cherry, he used to be at XXL. Susie Cole, who's a program director at the last rock and roll station on the, on the planet, the Riff in Detroit. We have Arian Timmermans, who's a pop music correspondent for CNN, Ken Tucker in Nashville, Fuzzy Fantabulous, who was 17 years on Power 106 in LA. Um, God, who am I forgetting? Mesa Williams from, from Rhino. I mean, there, and I'm forgetting people, but there's, there's, there's more. So they lead um, the, each of their respective areas, but they have then they reach out to the community and bring more people in. What do you think about how Beats will work in terms of the value for the label or the artist? You know, a lot of people have criticized uh, the streaming services, Spotify in particular, but all of them uh, for not giving enough back to the artists who are being streamed. Are you going to have the same approach as everybody else, or are you going to try something different? Well, it's different on a couple levels. Um, first of all, because we don't have free, it's actually fundamentally different. All right? So if you look at, if you look at the services that, that have free streaming, it pays, the free streams pay a lot less. So since we don't have a free service, we actually pay more on a per stream basis. A lot of the services that we've been talking about uh, who are competitors here in the States and also in Europe and maybe some of the ones from Europe who are coming here now like Deezer have struggled to, to turn a profit. I guess long term, uh, do you think that Beats, the streaming music company and Beats the headphone are synergistic and you don't expect Beats Music to be a profitable company or do you think long term uh, you know the streaming service will be able to be self-sustaining and profitable? The streaming service needs to be self-sustaining and profitable. We are a standalone company. We spun a company out of Beats Electronics last year so um, we are a sister company of Beats but you know it needs to have its own P&L and stand on its own two feet. Um, it's really not a complicated business though. I mean I think that Others have made it complicated by spending hundreds of millions of dollars a year um, with this free feature that's really kind of a, a marketing feature. But the paid subscription model is pretty straightforward. There's margin in every subscriber. Um, and you've just got to scale your, numbers, your number of subscribers larger than your fixed cost base. It's really more about how do you scale it? Because it, it, you know, if, you, if you can't scale it to millions of subscribers, then the business doesn't work. Um, but I, I really I believe that you know, between the product we have, um, the brand that we have, the partnerships we have, uh, and then what we are capable of internationally, that you know, we can invest in this business and, and grow to you know, tens of millions of subscribers over the coming years. And uh, I think that's all the question I had. One that came back to me, you said that uh, you're planning to pay the indies and the majors the same, uh, which 
isn't like your competitors, does that mean you're going to have more um, kind of obscure indie stuff? I find that a lot of times I'm not seeing the artists I like or the labels I like on the streaming services. It's a, it's a really great, great question. I think that I'm, I'm ex so excited about our catalog and our team for a couple of reasons. Come back to the, 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 the curators that you asked me about earlier. Two things. First of all, we've actually removed millions of tracks <laughs> from our catalog. Um, I, I don't know if you've, if you've kept up on what's happening with the, sp with the spammers in the catalog, um, but it's, it's a real problem. You have people that are uploading sound-alikes, cover versions, karaoke versions, trying to insert themselves and get plays um, and make a couple of pennies here and there. And, and it's just confusing for the consumer, right? You know, I was doing this thing on my seven-year-old and wanted to hear a thrift shop. And here I am on MOG, our service, and it was difficult for me to tell which one was the real song. Right. And we actually ended up listening to one that turned out not to be the right, not to actually be Macklemore. Right. Um, so we've, actually, we've gone to pains to get a lot of that, that bad content out. The, the, truly, it's spam. So that, that's one side of it. We actually care enough, we're not like, who has the most tracks, right? We wanna have a great consumer experience. So we've gotten a lot of that spam out. On the other side of it, because we have these, um, uh, uh, curators, what, that, what, we, what we're doing is that gives us a lot of direction in terms of what catalog are we missing. Right? So we're not trying to say, oh, let's go get those guys because they've got a million tracks. You know, when you have a curator like Decibel Magazine, which is core metal, what you find out is the metal record, the metal labels you don't have really quickly. Right? Because those guys come in and they go, these are the top, these are the 40 metal records in 2013 that matter. And then you're like, okay, well, and then you find out, oh, we're actually missing that label, that label, that label. And they might be small labels that only have a couple of, uh, you know, that have a relatively small roster, but those, but, but the roster's good because they're small selective labels that are to a core audience. So I think because of our curators, we actually go after catalog in a different way than our competitors do because we're not on a race to, you know, who can, who can do a press release with the most tracks. It's, it's who has the music that people care about. What else have you been listening to over the last year? I'll, uh, I'll point you to my best of 2014, okay. number 2013 list. And You'll have a mixtape on there that yeah, I could probably yeah, go find. To my, go to my profile, at IANCR, on Beats Music. And I actually do sort of a weekly or maybe twice a monthly mixtape, and you could, you could hear you know, what I'm into from Aretha Franklin and Sly and the Family Stone to you know, Kurt Vile to Mastodon. Well, thanks for coming and chatting with us today, and I uh, look forward to hearing it. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it.